good good morning good afternoon good evening uh this is shan from ci city and uh, it is really a pleasure for me to have the opportunity to uh share something that um we are using the digital health technologies in combating uh coronavirus in china so uh, this is my slides and uh, make sure yes and uh, uh so so um as this webinar is open to all and uh, uh, no very specific target audience so i prepared a very vivid way to share our experience with some digital health use cases and uh, my contents consist of this three part first a brief introduction of the background and then uh, some typical ICT cases in this outbreak and finally some further discussion and uh, conclusion so this is the start of the outbreak you probably know that and uh, is that it is about on the December uh, 13th an unknown uh, virus appeared in Wuhan and this is uh, this picture is in our national TV report on the next day. Experts from National Health Committee arrived in Wuhan at that morning. So this is the daily change curve and a serious uh, quick response from Chinese government. And I attached a link of WHO and the China uh, Joint Mission Press Conference on this page. So if you are interested on the details of this uh, of this picture, you can find more information from that. And uh, during my slides, I just want to say that uh, as a as the graph shows, you may expect expect a curve continue uh, climb and as the red line but we see peaks here actually so you may ask um uh, how about the situation is going on because this graph is only updated um, on uh, february 20th so just uh, as it's shown as the a blue line explained as of april 7th uh, according to the statistics of an um, nhc the daily confirmed cases are uh, 16 2 and most of them are international friends so we can say that things are uh, quite under control now and uh, and and also we can see that the difference between the red line uh, uh, before between the red line and the blue envelope, uh, we can measure that part as the effect of the prevention and control measures. So uh, what does this difference and also the effect com comes from? And what is the percentage of ICT in it? The answer, from my understanding, I think uh, digital health uh, plays a very important uh, supporting role, but not the main part and uh, to be honest we have to give credit where credit is due and we really appreciate the hard work uh, from the medical staff at the front line uh, you know during this outbreak over um, 14 thousand medical workers from all over the country risking their lives and uh, also saving others life at the front line and also the infrastructure workers they work they are working day and night during the new year festival making a 10-day hospital construction possible and also the government's quick response from the very beginning and to the home process and also the manufacturer supporting the um, production production medical production and as well as the community community workers and also volunteers and their tiny but important actions just um, to sum up to make a huge change to protect the lives around us so uh, we can say that it is the result of everyone working together so as a result i really like the statement from who uh, 
um, we must remember that they are numbers. Uh, they are not numbers, uh, not not just at the point on the curve. They are people, living people, with their same motivations and feelings like everyone of us. So if we see things from that perspective, we will understand the unbelievable hard work and the urgency to make to take actions as their home community. And as an ICT uh, engineers, we would probably also to have our contributions. And we may um, start with this question. Uh, what kind of uh, contributions that digital health could do. And uh, I think one common answer could be that to make life better. So here the, uh, the word life in that answer, I think could be everyone that we have mentioned in our cases that involved uh, the patients, doctors, manufacturers, and construction workers and their citizens and their volunteers and so on. So um, as the green part shows with various available uh, technologies, we can actually play a very um, positive supporting role in fighting with the coronavirus. So here comes the, uh, I call it magic uh, combination. And we just group, uh, regroup uh, what we have, the uh, the demand, and also the great part of the uh, digital health part, we regroup them as a puzzle. And I think it is a very important way to start with this, um, just to stick on the application scenarios and to feel the demand. And before we just finding a fancy uh, solution and um, products. So uh, we we would like to use technologies uh, like the magic tool and uh, we want it to go to where it is in need. So uh, just let me take an example. And uh, from what, we, what I have mentioned before, we understand the heavy load of the frontline doctors, uh, uh, doctors and we want to help to lift the burden on patients' treatment. So there could be an assisted a diagnosis system with AI and also um, the telemedicine based on 5G. And if we want to support the projection of the frontline worker, robots could also be a very, uh, very good tool to do the delivering and also disinfection work. And meanwhile, the um, effective production and also disparaging in could also um, be a strong support um, of the of the frontline workers. Mm -hmm. And besides their case tracking and their statistic uh, platform and also public and uh, public place sharing could also actively help with uh, the risk assessment and also the risk communication and to protect the ordinary people then to reduce their home risk level of their home society and last but not least we various uh, applications to meet basic uh, living living lists uh, could also support the uh, lockdown life um, and uh, to to make uh, the the quarantine life um, be more be more easy. So this feature act as an index of the uh, following use cases that I'm going to share, and I will give you more specific uh, description later. So according to uh, what I have mentioned, the teleco uh, the digital technologies are just regroup the orders. And uh, uh, the first case that I want to introduce, introduce is telemedicine that based on 5G. And uh, this is a picture uh, that on uh, February 9th, the PLL General Hospital conduct a remote cons consultation based uh, con connected to the first 5G uh, network with Wuhan Emergency Hospital. 
and we can see that experts stared at the um, uh, electronic screen in front of them, and the results of patients um, of the medical records and also the uh, indicators are uploaded in real time and with the high a resolution um, image and we that that they are very clear at a glance and uh, actually uh, this kind uh, it is a kind of practice that already test and used in china before the outbreak and uh, if you are interested in it you can also search for more uh, news report that before the outbreak that we have the uh, remote uh, surgery last year. Um, so that is why 5G and the telemedicine technologies response in the coronavirus so fast in China because it is already tested and used it and because of the metro mode and the infrastructure um, possibilities. So we can see also see it as their kind of preparation on the digital health part before the outbreak. And this time they also made a little um, innovation on the terminal. So uh, we call it 5G uh, telemedicine cart. And uh, this terminal is removable and could contain some medical supplies below the video. So in the uh, use cases with 5G, uh, expert, experts from both sides, we can see that in the picture, from both sides could share the patient's medical files with high definition uh, image, and it could definitely enlarge the supply of the frontline expertise and also effectively reduce the infec infection on the medical workers. And uh, besides 5G and telemedicine, AI is also a kind of strong truth could help in this um, prevention and control of the outbreak. Uh, just take one product as an example, the infrared. Uh, they are also actually a topic driver in our AI for Health focus group. And their system takes just a few seconds to process dozens of CD scans and provide support for rapid screaming and also give some suggestions to doctors. And uh, this is a general workflow that I always used in our focus group to, in, uh, to say something about the AI for Health uh, process. And uh, we can see it from different perspective. From at the bottom, from the user's perspective, uh, we can see AI as a kind of black box and that is uh, the structure or non-structure data put inside and then with the strong computing um, possibilities and it fits us with an answer uh, many based on um, correlation so um, it could the answer could be some screaming result the diagnosis uh, reference and also and health management suggestions and so on and also to make their black box uh, be reliable and safe. And we also have another kind of perspective is that uh, in the industry, we also have to uh, do it in the um, regulation way or regulation to commit the regulation requirement. For example, the benchmark assessment and also the clinic trials and um, also a very important part is that the post market surveillance to help the the or the overall ai system be safe and trusty so i have what i have mentioned to diagnose with the coronavirus is just one kinds of examples of the ai for health uh, applications so if you are interested, you're welcome to click our focus group links and I attached to here and you can find more details. And also, um, apart from the diagnosis in the clinical line and uh, AI are also with a great um, potential to support the vaccine development. And uh, you might probably 
uh, heard about the uh, double trending principles in pharmaceutical industry. That is, uh, say that it's a kind of saying that uh, you should have um, an average time of 20 years and also an average cost of 2 billion US dollars uh, to develop a new kind of drugs um, on the market. So this kind of two um, data are in the industry to emphasize how difficult it is to develop a new drug. And, uh, uh, and, uh, and this picture, what I, have, um, I want to show is that the AI also help with the uh, vaccine development. And this picture is a kind of modeling in of some target for the um, protein sequ sequence of the coronavirus. And uh, it is based on the Alibaba cloud to uh, develop a drug R&D platform and to support the vaccine development of coronavirus. And also Ma Yun, the founder of um, Alibaba, also launched a donation of, one be, uh, of 100 million and opened the cloud computing capacities to support the development of vaccine of coronavirus. And uh, this is the details on the slides. But uh, what I want to mention is that you have to understand an AI mm, just help with mm, several steps of the, the of the development work and just for the uh, uh, compound compound testing and screaming after uh, so after the discovering of their uh, candidate drugs you also have to go through what we have mentioned before their uh, um, pre preclinic research, clinic trials, and also to apply for a new drugs and then uh, get the approval from the regulations. Then you can go to the market. So um, according to the latest news, uh, China and the US uh, first step into the clinical uh, trial, uh, trial paces. And uh, so we are also very looking forward uh, what is going on next, and hopefully uh, the vaccine could be developed in very soon. So additionally, AI could also help with the um, uh, public uh, place screaming, and uh, especially during the uh, society recovery stage, and the um, public place screaming could be very helpful and important. This picture um, uh, just show a kind of long um, connect uh, temperature di dictation system. It could be used in very uh, tensely populated areas such as the railway station, the um, airport, and the uh, building entrance, and etc. And uh, the next page is some on. Um, uh, some process and to to of the um, implement and I know uh, Miss Yuan will have more technical details in her presentation, so I'll just skip it and uh, leave in there are more details in Miss Yuan's presentation. And I know uh, the last time um, our European colleagues also share some uh, tracking and case tracking in. Uh, use cases on on the coronavirus and uh, in China, CICT, China uh, Telecom and China Union and also in China Mobile jointed a launched uh, uh, travel card based on their uh, uh, tele uh, based on their telecommunication data and uh, to just uh, uh, give you a self check and also the proof if you have ever been to an epidemic religion in the past 14 days or not, just based on the, uh, the base station data. So it's a kind of the traffic light. Uh, for example, if you are no risk, then we give you a green card and the middle risk, you have a yellow card and a high risk for a, a red card. So uh, the, anas the analysis uh, 
on the on their back end is based on the uh, major three uh, telecommunication uh, operators and uh, it is a kind of service that uh, provide the individual uh, risk assessment for 1.6 billion mobile phone users across the country. And uh, it is a kind of one clinic, uh, clinic uh, inquire of the countries and also religions that you have visit within the 14 days to give you a uh, proof and also the risk assessment result. And for the fifth fifth uh, cases that I want to share is about the uh, medical material dispatching. So, um, so this picture is that on February first, um, Premier League came to check the national key uh, medical material departing platform on the public on the on production and also the disparaging of the product uh, of the protective stuffs. And we also have a platform that developed it um, by MIT, the Ministry of Industry and uh, Information Technology. And on that platform, we have uh, 21 uh, categories of the key uh, medical supplies. And uh, most importantly, we have the function of the uh, monitoring on the production capacity and also the um, the scheduling and also the output of all kinds of the uh, medical supplies. And also, uh, uh, beside that part, uh, that that platform, CICT also developed a uh, posting posting platform at the very beginning of the outbreak, and with that platform that I have showed in the slides, you can post the demand information and also the supply information as well as your contact uh, to to just dock the the uh, supply and demand of the digital health resources. And uh, this platform is also approved by the joint uh, defense and uh, control mechanism of the uh, mechanism of the uh, state's council. So uh, the products that you could uh, posting and include the medical uh, protections, softwares, and uh, solutions, and uh, intelligent uh, devices, equipment, and also what we have mentioned, like Alibaba, the computing capacities, and so on. So this is the virtualization of this uh, kind of digital health uh, resources, uh, supply and uh, demand platform. And uh, also um, the risk uh, communication is another very important use case that I want to share. Uh, so no one is safe until everyone is safe. So during this outbreak, just to be transparent in time and accurate to let everyone receive the right knowledge to protect themselves is very important. So uh, take the National Health Committee website, for example, it acts as a uh, authority channel to daily, up, uh, to daily update the uh, statistic data and also uh, promote the protection uh, knowledge and uh, clinical strategies. And um, also, we also have a um, phone page that embedded in WeChat and developed by Ding Xiangyuan. And, uh, you know, during the lockdown day, <laughs> my daily routine is to check for the real time updates of, up on that platform. And we can see the curves and also the maps and also related uh, technology, uh, also related. Uh, knowledge on that page. And uh, uh, as far as I know, they also developed an English version to support the global rescue. And uh, for the seven use cases that I want to share is about the uh, multi multifunction robots. Um, so this is a picture that a kind of medical robots that officially used in Wuhan uh, emergency hospital. So uh, with the function of uh, disinfection and also deliver 
delivery, and it can reduce the workload of medical staff and also uh, the risk of cross infection in hospital. So actually, uh, there are also other kinds of examples of the robots, for example, uh, the um, temperature measuring the disinfection and also the deliverable robots in different shapes and developed by different countries. And uh, we can also see the applications um, of robots in our daily life before the outbreak. But during this uh, very special period, the role of the robots has been greatly amplified and also recognized by public. And finally, this is the last case, last use cases that I want to mention is about the various living applications that to support the lockdown on life for most of people. And for example, um, the the online consultations, online shopping, and uh, an online educations, works, and also psych uh, psychological in invitations, and so on. So uh, this is just a few examples that I I, I uh, have it in this page. For example, the community entering and exist uh, restriction system, and also the online consultations, and also the you, you can have your uh, takeaway uh, to order your takeaway online, including the glossaries, and also some um, tele uh, teleconference, and also the online educations to make you uh, able to work from home and uh, study from home, and also some um, other entertainments that uh, based on the digital technologies. So uh, that is all use cases, the detailed use cases that I want to share in my speech. And if you are interested in more, we actually, CICT actually um, published a kind of best practice on the digital health cases in uh, coronavirus and uh, from now we have over 170 cases in our uh, reports and uh, we'll be continually updating in our website and uh, there's English version of the uh, best practice reports is on the way. So uh, for the last part that I want to say is that um, we are not limited and uh, just willing to do a limited part of research on just the use case is the, the perspective or use cases. We also want to uh, monitor and evaluate the effects and the course of different uh, digital technologies. And so in that way, we believe uh, we can have more valuable experience that we could share to different countries. So then they can, based on our um, experience, to pick what is the uh, suitable way and the strategy for them to do the to, to fight with the coronavirus. So for this part, uh, we as a start, we um, designed a questionnaire on the monitoring and evaluation part. So we will be very appreciate you if you can share. Uh, some information from your side and to give us some input in this questionnaire. And also you're welcome to connect me if you are interested in the uh, evaluation part. So this is the summary uh, page. Uh, first, I want to say that uh, digital health will not be the main contributors in combating coronavirus, but it could play a very important supporting role on the uh, control and prevention work. And uh, for the second part, I share some digital health use cases, for example, um, the telemedicine AI for health and the platform on the medical uh, material dispatching and also the risk uh, communications and also robots, as well as some um, um, digital living applications to support um, most of people's life. So more details you could find in our CIACT best uh, practice uh, report. And for the last part, 
and uh, uh, we want to share a reproducible uh, experience for other countries. And uh, we realize their importance on the monitoring and evaluation of the effectiveness of different uh, digital health uh, cases. So we will be very appreciate if you uh, have some input and also uh, some, some comments on that part also as well as the questionnaires. So uh, at the last, I want to thank Ms. Xu Weiling, Ms. Liu Rui, uh, Ms. Zhang Xueli, Ms. Ming Dong, uh, Ms. Wang Yapong for reading the first version of my slides and giving uh, important guidance, as well as I want to uh, thank for the cases and data supporting from Ms. Liu Yifei and other colleagues from CRACT as well as continued supporting from Dr. Lo Zhong and the study group of 16 of ITU. And also thanks to Ms. Gordon Gawley and uh, Ms. Uh, Dr. Gordon Gawley and Ms. Chen Mengji from WHO China office to provide very valuable suggestions on, on our research. And uh, most importantly, thank, uh, thanks to ITU giving me the opportunities to share these information and also to further discuss with you. So uh, thank you for listening. That is all of my slides. Thank you. So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. This is Yuan Zhang from China Telecom Machine Vision Standardization and Strategy Department. I'm the rapporteur of Question 12, Study Group 16, and also the co-chair of MPEG Video Coding for Machines at our group. I'm very honored to have this opportunity uh, to share some of our work in the uh, COVID-19 combating. And let me share my slide. And Shen has just made an impressive, impress, impressive presentation of the uh, pandemic combating. We have some similar work and also joint work with CICT as well. I'll continue to introduce our work uh, in the perspective of a telecommunication operator. So my talk includes three parts. First, our role in pandemic combating, and then observations and facts, and then the measures that we have taken. Shen has just gave a throw background and timeline about the outbreak in China. I'll skip this part. So now we are facing a global crisis, an unexpected test for humankind. Uh, it's a test for our healthcare system, our society, uh, our humanity, and of course our telecommunication systems as people are locked down or quarantined. And we are trying different approaches to pass this exam to survive. The decisions that we made in this period of time will contribute to the reshaping of the world for years to come. Things are different among countries, although uh, we are in different battles, but we are in the same war. It's against the time and the virus. So we just try to take the most effective methods in most efficient way, trying to balance the trade-off. So I hope our experience will be of use as China went in this first. What role do we play in this pandemic? We are no doctors or nurses, no policymakers, so we are not in the front line in this. As a telecommunication operator, uh, our advantages, uh, first of all, rely on our telecommunication infrastructure. We have more than 1 million 4G base stations and uh, 50, uh, 75,000 5G base stations and about 170 million broadband subscribers. And also we have a close link to our customers. We're still providing on-site, on-spot service during the pandemic. And our goal is to transform technology into capabilities for continuous work, study, and lives, and also the uh, epidemic prevention during this 
pandemic uh, to tens of thousands of households. Uh, as a big company, uh, we will shoulder the social responsibility by providing infrastructures and services both for health care and for quality of lives. So based on this, our role and our mission, uh, we take measures accordingly. Next, I will share some of our observations and facts. Uh, I looked into our statistic data in February. The requirements for remote application are increasing. Regarding business-to-business -business services, the most visible ones are remote video applications. Among all of the emergency applications, the top two are healthcare and education associated applications. Uh, for example, the hospital information system, online schooling, and we have launched the cloud conferencing product on January. Within one month after launching, we have got more than uh, 700,000 subscribers, which is 22 times growth comparing to data before pandemic. And regarding 5G applications, uh, we have supported the uh, live cloud overseers, which, uh, which is an interesting project. I will talk about that later. And the telemedicine, as Shen has just introduced. And the top business to customer services are online education and telecommuting. So this is our first observation, which seems obvious. And let's look at the second one. The network flow is increasing. We can see from the statistics here that the wireless and broadband network flow are both increasing about 20%. But the QS didn't drop. Uh, then you might want to ask what approaches did we take? As the data transfer speeds and download speeds did not slow down and everyone can still access to the internet where smartphone just as well, even in Wuhan city. Uh, so what did we do? Um, stay at home uh, policy will definitely add to network congestion. I've learned about that the uh, um, mobile operators from some countries have asked users to reduce their data consumption. And also there are some novel ideas such as uh, providing 4G signal from a, a high altitude balloon, uh, which is very interesting. And also asking the bit streaming services such as uh, Amazon, YouTube, to reduce the quality of videos, to free up the capacity. And also uh, some countries granted networks additional radio spectrum on a temporary basis. Uh, but we didn't take those, those approaches. I try to give some explanation here through comparison. Uh, we don't have significant drop of QS for 4G, LTE, IPTV, short messages, etc. The reason is simple. Uh, we could take a look at the figure in the table. Uh, the total of broadband subscribers in China uh, uh, until last August is more than 400 million. And the fiber to home subscribers also exceeds uh, 400 million. And uh, Problem subscribers with a bandwidth more than uh, 100 megabit per second uh, is about 350 million. Uh, so uh, what does this say? Uh, it means that the peak level of data consumption did not uh, come close to the limit of the the broadband network. Uh, so we have advantages in optical access networks and fiber to home deployment. Uh, the persistence effort to build network has been paid off. China Telecom is continuously enhancing our broadband access bandwidth. Uh, 100 mil, uh, megabyte bit per, uh, bit per second is the baseline bandwidth now. And the bandwidth more than 100 to uh, the uh, home accounts for uh, about 80%. Uh, I'm not saying that we took no measures. We have constructed base stations and also optical networks in certain regions, uh, especially in Wuhan, to increase the capacity. And there is one more thing to be noted that QS does not only depend on the access network bandwidth, but also the bandwidth of backbone. So the uh, QS at night is not 
not as good as daytime uh, because the traffic uh, during nighttime uh, is easily congested, uh, especially for the inter international gateway. And there are some other facts and observations uh, based on statistics on fiber ray uh, that roaming users and data volume are dropping due to the travel restriction and risks. And volume of short messages is decreasing, which has been a trend as IM applications are booming. Except for public services, short messages, a lot of uh, short messages are sent about COVID-19 uh, by different platforms or applications. And there are increasing need for uh, VPN and remote access as a result, uh, safety requirements are surging. Although we didn't stop on-site service, there is a need for service online. And there are growing need for uh, CDN uh, with the requirements of 19.5 peak value of three ter uh, terabyte and total flow of 45 uh, petabyte. And virtual cloud server requirements and use ratio of the resources has increased. And the cloud computer is developing and went into use. Blowout of remote applications with novel requirements. Most of them are now new inventions, such as uh, remote, uh, not new inventions, such as remote conferencing. But during work at home, we found that the function of uh, beautifying and clothes changing would be very helpful. Uh, as maybe we would like to have the function of clothes changing while we work at home and maybe in bed. And there are a lot of products and solutions which are the integration of capabilities to better serve the requirements and uh, if effectively. And China Telecom has developed more than 70 new applications for different regions and industries. And I will introduce some of them in the next part. So the third part measures that we have taken. The miracles, just Shen mentioned, that we have built a hospital in 10 days. Uh, there is something more I could talk about. Uh, instead of one, we built three. Uh, the Huoshen Shen Hospital, uh, Huoshen Shen Hospital, Lei Shen Shen Hospital, and the Special Hospital for Women and Children, all in Wuhan City. And we were uh, building them on cloud. Uh, I mean, all the medical systems and the information systems are deployed on cloud. Uh, they are the first hospitals on cloud in China. The whole construction took 10 days, but we only took three days to deploy the network and cloud resources. So what's on cloud? It's normal to have the auxiliary information systems on cloud. But the Huoshenshan and Leishenshan Hospital are applying the all on cloud solution. The so major business and information systems are the hospital information system, HIS, laboratory information system, LIS, and picture archiving and communication systems, PACS. They are all on cloud, and so are the operation management, resource management knowledge management, customer service, including the queuing system and all databases. The measures we took are that for one hospital, we have seven dedicated cloud server to support the service and applications, and we deployed the same type of services in different underlying servers, physical servers. We designed a host and backup database uh, and back up the data timely to make sure the availability and reliability. The benefit of this hospital on cloud uh, that IT maintenance in local is reduced. We only need to dock and test in the given environment. And also the deployment of all healthcare applications accelerated. And we could simply duplicate the solution. Uh, actually, we did the Huoshenshan first, and then we copied the solution to Leishenshan Hospital. And we could expect that it could be shared among hospitals in future. Uh, it's a potential standardization area uh, with common interfaces and data formats. Uh, systems and data could be shared under certain rules in future. 
And an interesting thing about this, we have launched a 24-hour high-definition live broadcast of the construction of the two hospitals. The highest peak of online users exceeded 100 million. It is, uh, called in China, the strongest cloud supervision, cloud overseers project in history. And it's based on 5G network and our cloud platform. Uh, while people are quarantined at home and uh, cheering up for workers on site remotely, uh, we might have a new record here. Another major application is the track querying app, uh, which provides the individual subscribers with functions include regional risk query, epidemic situation forecast query, return to city report query, itinerary and content query. And on the basis of ensuring user privacy and safety, it conducts, conducts real-time perception of the flow of people in key epidemic areas with cooperation with uh, relevant provinces. And can also provide interfaces to other stakeholders while cooperating and support, supporting CICT on the case tracking and modeling app. It gets people's location and analyzes the people flow in key epidemic area, such as fever clinics and people gathering areas, uh, to provide open and transparent data and dispel the unnecessary unnecessary fear of the epidemics. About uh, 20 billion signal data and billion data were processed every day, uh, covering all 2G, 4G, 3G users. And to the end of last month, uh, there are 70 million uh, query records. The track query analyzes the information, such as the cities and countries that the user has passed a state within 14 days uh, through historical data. So people can query potential risk and know better of their own status. And it has introduced AI capabilities to develop prediction models, analyze the possible future development trend of the epidemic uh, to realize dynamic factor adjustment and the ability of self-predicting the epidemic. Uh, individual users can uh, inquire about their own uh, itinerary, the possibility of virus user contact, and regional risks through their uh, mobile phone number, and understand the uh, risk in real time. Uh, the products are of, uh, currently used by more than 10 million people. They are promoted by China Telecom as a key application service product uh, serving the public in relevant provinces and cities. Uh, this app also have a function of epidemic prediction. The main data that the uh, infectious disease uh, dynamic model relies on uh, all from authorities, uh, which objectively describe the changing of the epidemic situation and provide a basis for epidemic prediction. Uh, the application has introduced an important fact, factor, population mobility. As population mobility is the main factor in the development of the uh, infect infectious disease, uh, the OIDD data is used to calculate the frequency of population mobility and to optimize the prediction accuracy of the model. Uh, so the common uh, model include SI, SIR, SIRS, and uh, SEIR models. Uh, the SEIR model is mainly used to predict the uh, memory of infectious diseases with latent period, which is consistent with the characteristics of COVID-19. And we have achieved the accuracy uh, of more than 99% for uh, existing confirmed case and also more than 99% for uh, the total confirmed case. Uh, so just now Shen has mentioned about a similar app regarding the uh, temperature detection. We integrated this function to our surveillance system uh, through black body and infrared ray in the front end devices 
to precisely detect the temperature and real-time alert software in the terminal devices to enable the real-time temperature tracking uh, in areas with uh, heavy traffic from passenger flow like train station, uh, metro station, and entrance to shopping mall, etc. And mask recognition algorithm is uh, implemented in certain scenario, like in a uh, enclosed area that people are asked to wear masks to access in. Uh, it will send an alert when the camera detects people are not wearing masks appropriately, and also uh, when the density of uh, people exceed the maximum value. And as well, we have a lot of other applications, uh, which I will not go into detail. Uh, some of them are interesting, uh, like we have the MN business office for people to subscribe to our services, and the 5G uh, UAV MN aero vehicle uh, with thermometers and lots, uh, intelligent loudspeakers to patrol and find people with a fever and to remind people of no gathering. And we have a, a lot of other emerging applications. Uh, uh, we have the MN business office, the 5G UAV, uh, and uh, you, if you are interested, you could contact me for details. Uh, so this is all my presentation. Thank you for listening. And I would like to thank all my colleagues for help to uh, gather the materials. Uh, and please feel free to contact me if you have any question or something you would like to have a further discussion. Uh, I'll try to answer them or forward them to our experts in particular areas. Uh, and you can also contact me if you are interested in machine vision associated standardization work. Thank you very much.